This video discusses the nature of mycorrhizal networks and their necessity to the environment, the prevention of global warming and the sustainability of future generations. Uh, mycorrhizal networks are underground systems of roots and mycelium connecting plants and fungi in a symbiotic relationship through which they communicate and share resources. This video considers their similarity to conventional social networks and questions with supporting evidence from mycologists and fungi enthusiasts whether mycorrhizal networks are social networks in their own right. The damaging impact of climate change to mycorrhizal networks is also discussed, identifying why it's detrimental to biodiversity and the balance of the carbon cycle. In addition, this video will be arguing that changes in public perception of fungi, be it negative connotations of death and dirt or just complete unawareness of their importance, are necessary to reverse climate change and develop a sustainable future, analysing three artists working to represent fungi in positive ways that promote understanding, appreciation and conservation. Stephen Borgatti and Brandon Offham explain the concept of the social network in the field of sociometry. A network consists of a set of nodes or actors along with a set of ties of a single type that connect the nodes. The nodes can be persons, teams, departments, organisations, industries or any other type of entity that is capable of having some sort of relationship with another entity. Flows are those tangible and intangible things that are transmitted through interaction. Ideas are transmissible through communication. Viruses and material resources are transmitted through physical contact and so on. Ties are not treated in isolation, rather they link up to form paths, thereby providing a mechanism through which nodes may affect one another indirectly. In many cases, these paths can be thought of as pipes through which information, resources and the like can flow. Structure is seen as an important determination of what happens to the network. Thus, a team's success is not only a function of the individual talents of the team members, but of the way they are connected to one another. As the biologist Merlin Sheldrake writes in his first book, Entangled Life, monotropa, like the majority of green plants, depend on their mycorrhizal fungal partners to survive. Other plants give carbon to the fungal mycelium in exchange for nutrients, as it can spread further and deeper at a faster rate and can reach more water and nutrients than the plants could with their roots alone. However, monotropa have worked out how to sidestep the exchange part. Instead, they receive both carbon and nutrients from mycorrhizal fungi and don't appear to give anything back. Monotropa uniflora exist as evidence that the forest is a network connected by fungal mycelia, as the carbon that makes up the monotropa can only come from other plants. If carbon didn't flow from a green plant to the monotropa through shared fungal connections, the monotropa couldn't survive. This suggests that mycorrhizal networks fall under the category of social networks defined by Bogatti and Offham with sets of nodes, plants, trees and fungi, and ties connecting them, i.e. roots and hyphae, creating pathways for nodes to affect each other, sharing carbon and nutrients. It's important to note that relationships between nodes in a mycorrhizal network are distinctly different to systems of relationships defined as social networks in that they're physically connected and communicate through this. Sheldrake compares these relationships to having 20 acquaintances with whom one shares a circulatory system. This supports the concept of the forest as a social network while recognising that it acts simultaneously as one body. Aaliyah Whiteley discusses in The Secret Life of Fungi how a mycorrhizal network acts as one automatic body rather than a network of pieces dissected into cause and effect. She writes that a forest with a strong mycelial network is the same as a human body, even to the point of having its own defensive mechanisms. A human body produces pain signals to warn of trouble, and a plant uses the mycelial network to alert others in its vicinity to attacks by insects such as an aphid infestation, passing on the news of its predicament via the underground connections. This comparison to a singular body might suggest that mycorrhizal networks can't be defined as social networks, however, it can be argued that this suggestion judges the communication of plants and fungi through a human-based lens. While nodes in a social network can communicate needs for resources and information verbally, the mycorrhizal network sends signals through its web of roots and hyphae to communicate. Perhaps this isn't a lack of social communication, but just a different method of it that's incomparable to human experience. The physical connection serves as a great benefit to the network as a whole. Robert McFarlane supports this notion in Underland, writing that sugars, nitrogen and phosphorus can be shared between trees in a forest. A dying tree might divest its resources into the network, 
to the benefit of the community, for example, or a struggling tree might be supported with extra resources by its neighbours. In addition, Whiteley's comparison of mycorrhizal networks to a human body identifies that they share not only physical resources through their pathways but intangible information, further supporting the definition of a mycorrhizal network as a social network. The evidence given demonstrates that these enormous webs of roots and mycelium connecting entire forests can be recognised as social networks under the criteria identified in social network analysis. They're made up of individual nodes, i.e. plants and fungi, sharing flows of resources and information, i.e. carbon, nutrients and alerts of danger or need for extra resources, uh, through their ties, i.e. roots and mycelium. They benefit from their social relationships, surviving better as a connected network by sharing resources and information to support the community. Despite this, the forest does not think as humans do, and so can be compared instead to the automatic reflexes of a body rather than a social network. The main certainty is that we have no personal experience of mycorrhizal communication, and so we can't accurately compare it easily to any human experience, and to reject non-human communication methods from social network theory may diminish the brilliance and intelligence of mycorrhizal networks, particularly now at a time when recognising the essentiality of mycorrhizal networks may be crucial to reversing the effects of climate change in the next century. Anne Carnine is a German sculptor whose delicate textile sculptures representing fungi were presented at the Berlin Art Week in 2016. Her work is made from wire, yarn and pieces of her own clothing and depicts both the surface level mushrooms and the twisting system of roots beneath them as though the entire fungus has been carefully uprooted and affectionately displayed. Her sculptures depict fungi in their entirety, like an anatomical study. This photo shows a delicately constructed textile representation of mycelia that dwarfs its mushrooms, inviting the viewer to consider the scale and impact of the fungi beyond what is seen at the surface. It also encourages consideration of fungi's role in human life, how it lives in symbiosis with us, and how our disturbances to the environment may affect this. By using pieces of her own clothing, Carnine entwines herself with the fungi, recognising their essentiality to the cycle of life, death and carbon, and our similarity to them as living, complex, communicating organisms. Carnine's work identifies and depicts beautifully that fungi are fundamentally more complex than meets the eye, introducing her audience to the hidden enormous system of the underground mycorrhizal network. She also demonstrates that the mushroom is not the most beautiful and fascinating feature of the fungus. Human disturbance is causing significant threat to our mycorrhizal networks, and with them our global biodiversity. Aaliyah Whiteley writes on the topic of deforestation that if a forest is one organism, then the act of continually chopping down and then replanting trees without consideration of how they're connected makes no sense. Given that all trees in a forest exist as a community connected through vast networks of fungal mycelium, the act of deforestation could be devastating for the forest as a whole, breaking communication between trees and putting a greater risk on the lives of the entire network. This is also why global warming and the danger it represents to fungi in colder climates is predicted to prove fatal to entire forests and significantly harmful to global biodiversity. Climate change is damaging our planet's mycorrhizal networks, threatening a decrease in biodiversity and an increase in carbon in the atmosphere. Researchers from the Crowther Lab at ETH Zurich, Switzerland and Stanford University in the US used the database of the Global Forest Initiative to produce a global map of mycorrhizal networks, covering 1.2 million tree plots made up of 28,000 species in over 70 different countries. Mycorrhizal fungi are categorised into two separate types. Firstly, there's arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, which release carbon out into the atmosphere at a fast rate and are typically found in low latitude regions with tropical climates. And the ectomycorrhizal fungi, which store carbon within the soil and are found in high latitude areas with cold and dry climates. Around 60% of the Earth's trees are connected to ectomycorrhizal fungal networks. However, that percentage has begun to decline as a result of global warming. As temperatures rise, these areas will become increasingly inhabitable for exomycorrhizal fungi, along with all of their associated species of trees and plants. Arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and their compatible plant species will replace them, threatening not only Earth's biodiversity but its atmosphere. Without a decline in global carbon emissions by the year 2100, um, Earth's 
predicted to lose 10% of all its ectomycorrhizal fungi and associated plant life. As the numbers of arboscular mycorrhizal fungi rise with the temperature, more and more carbon will be spewed out into the atmosphere, and with no ectomycorrhizal fungi to maintain balance and store carbon in the ground, this will accelerate the climate crisis even further. Mycorrhizal fungi and their communities of plants play an important role in protecting the delicate balance of the Earth's carbon cycle, which is crucial to the slowing and reversing of climate change. It's therefore essential for the future of the climate and biodiversity for humans to recognise this important role, to understand how our behaviours are damaging it, and to make necessary changes in our ways of living to reverse this damage. Lara Ogle is a multidisciplinary artist based in Turkey whose work comments on personal, social and universal experiences of the human condition. Her 2017 film, What Else Grows in the Dark, is a compilation of found footage of people digging up and handling mushrooms, which Ogle uses to make comparisons between repressed subversion of sexual desire and man's conflicted relationship with nature. Following this project, Ogle wrote in her article, The Benefits of Digesting Oneself, a reflection of her own mycophobic tendencies and her journey to appreciating her relationship with fungi, which was published in Hammam magazine. Lara Ogle writes, On acid, I participated in a remembrance of a long gone tree. As I extended my hand towards a sycamore, a rather flirtatious one at that, he introduced me to two pine trees not too far away. I greeted them and felt a cold air of absence. My hair grew longer and became part of the moss friend of the lichens and soil, now embracing their lost companion. My fingers were soft, fuzzy, crumbling, my hair released its roots into the soil and the rest of my body expanded in all directions. I no longer held a single vision of this experience but could see it from all points of view. My sense of self was no longer relevant or accessible. All had become one during this commemoration of care and remembrance through humility and appreciation. Ogle's film represents a repression and perversion of our relationship with nature and sexuality, identifying that both stem from personal and political conditions. Through the development of this film, her practices of mushroom hunting and eating, and her psychedelic experience, Ogle came to feel a oneness with fungi, the collective we, the experience and realisation of my connection to everything else changed the way I saw myself in nature. As distinctions between my body and that of Earth lifted, I no longer contemplated death as an ending, but a comforting awareness of the possibility of metamorphosis and renewal. Fungi acts as Ogle's metaphor for the acceptance of death, overcoming her mycophobia, and shifting from a sense of estrangement to a connection with all organic material. It appears that Ogle views this article, published four years after the completion of What Else Grows in the Dark, as an essential piece of the project itself. The entire article is available to read beneath a brief description of the film on her website, appearing as an artefact of the project, and it acts as a conclusion to her journey, rounding off her experience and learning to love mushrooms. Through studying fungi and finding a sense of kinship with the trees, Ogle was able to have an experience of tuning into the social network of the forest. With greater knowledge and experience of the mycorrhizal networks, Ogle was able to shift her perception of fungi from negative to positive, making artworks inspired by mushrooms and recognising them as a symbol of regeneration. Mycotex, or Mycelium Textile, by the designer Anila Hoytink, is a fashion project exploring the use of fungal material to make practical clothing that is durable, biodegradable and regenerative. This photo shows four different garments made entirely out of fungal mycelia. Two of them are plain in texture and more conventional in their style, while two have more ornate details which are organic and fungal in appearance. This tackles the issues of unethical manufacturing processes and wasted materials by working with an organic material that is naturally grown and entirely compostable. In addition to being an ethical alternative for future clothing, Mycotex aims to alter public perceptions of fungi which carry negative connotations of damp, dirt and death and transform them into positive pieces of sustainable fashion. They aim to turn fungi into a celebrated and essential part of our future ways of living, and to growth, sustainability and innovation. Mycotex displays the versatility of fungi as a material that's not only strong and lightweight, but ethical, abundant and biodegradable. So this project proves that fungi are an essential problem solver to our current unsustainable ways of living, which in turn promotes the protection of our mycorrhizal networks to recognise their impact on our existence and vice versa, and to coexist in a manner that benefits both humans and fungi. The three artists discussed in this video engage with and take inspiration from fungi in various different ways, all with the common aim of changing perceptions of fungi. 
All three artists engage with the marvel of mycorrhizal networks. Carneen achieves this with delicate textile sculptures of mycelia to make visual this unseen network, appreciating its scale and complexity in comparison to their tiny mushrooms, which are made less significant, while Ogle recalls her experience of non-verbal conversation with trees in a forest and the connection they all shared. Hoyting demonstrates the versatility of mycelia as a compostable clothing material for a more sustainable future. Although Hoyting and Carnine don't engage directly with the social aspects of mycorrhizal networks, their work promotes the protection and conservation of mycorrhizae. Hoyting by identifying their necessity to the future, and Carnine by demonstrating their beauty and mystery. Carnine and Ogle express this essentiality of fungi to mankind in a more emotional sense than Hoyting's practical approach. Carnine does this by representing fungi as beautiful and almost otherworldly, floating delicately against white backdrops, while Ogle likens our detachment from them to repressed subversion of sexual nature and writes in great detail of her emotional response to feeling at one with fungi. Overall, the artworks discussed promote greater understanding, conservation and appreciation for fungi and acknowledgement of their complex networks and the essential roles they play. Creating artwork inspired by and made of fungi pushes their essential roles and fascinating behaviours further into the mainstream, thus generating more awareness for these vital organisms and their essentiality to the environment and the sustainability of our future. To summarise, mycorrhizal networks are significantly complex in their behaviours and structures, connecting entire forests in a system of communication that benefits the entire forest by providing a means for sharing of resources and passing of information, such as alerts of danger. These social networks of fungi and plants go unseen and unrecognised beneath the soil, while human activity threatens their survival. Fungi are essential to mankind, providing sustainable alternatives to our ways of living, maintaining stable levels of carbon in the atmosphere, and acting as a symbol of our oneness with nature. Mycologists and artists are successfully altering public perceptions of fungi through their work, reinventing them as representations of regeneration, renewal and metamorphosis, as opposed to dampness, dirt and death. Recognising the complexity, the necessity and the positive impact of mycorrhizal networks is essential to the future of ourselves, collectively and individually, to biodiversity and to the reversal of climate change.